Hello, this is Mrs. Nearing, and in this video we are going to look at some of the practice problems from page 16, which involve using ice charts to predict the concentration or pressure of various reactants or products at equilibrium. And so to review, ice charts are a problem-solving strategy that we can use to kind of set up what we know and what we don't know anytime we're solving an equilibrium problem. And there's two main ways in which you can use an ice chart. What we did first in class is we saw some scenarios where we given the concentration or pressure, then we were able to use that to solve for K. In these practice problems, we're gonna do the opposite. If we are given the value of K, the equilibrium constant, we are going to solve for the concentration or pressure. If we are given a KC value, we will the values that come out of our calculation will be in molarity. If we are given a Kp value, then the values will be in pressure in atmospheres. And this is predictive. It's kind of like stoichiometry. It's basically like we're saying you mix together this and this and how much product you're going to make. There's just a little extra piece here in that we're given a value of an equilibrium constant. Um, in stoichiometry, we assumed all the reactions just went to completion. Okay. So let's take a look at this. We've got this reaction. We've got gaseous water decomposing to form uh, gaseous hydrogen and oxygen. So first thing we're gonna do is write a Kp expression. Notice how this is a Kp. And two things about a Kp. One is when you write a Kp expression, you wanna use the symbol P for pressure. Um, if it were a Kc, let's write these side by side. If it were a Kc, I would use the square brackets. And the values that go into this would be in molarity. Since it's a Kp, I'm gonna use the symbol P for pressure. And the values that I'm going to plug into this are going to be pressures in atmospheres. And I'm gonna set up my ice chart. So this one already has kind of a template set up for you. And then I'm gonna add in what I know. So I know the initial partial pressure of my water is 1.27 atmospheres. It looks like initially I start with just pure water, nothing else. So these start at zero. And that's the only number I'm given. I don't know any of these values down here at equilibrium. So I'm gonna start using the symbol x to represent my unknown amount by which I'm going to change. So I don't know what my amount is going to be at equilibrium, but I do know that some water is going to get used up and some of my um, hydrogen oxygen gas is going to be made. So I'm going to use up reactants and make products. And I know that my change is going to be proportional to the mole ratio. So it's going to be a 2 to 2 to 1 ratio. But I don't know how much they're changing by, so I'm going to use the symbol X to represent my unknown. So my equilibrium value I get by adding together initial plus change. So this is 1.27 plus negative 2X, so that's this. Um, this is 0 plus 2X, and this is 0 plus 1X. So this is what I know about my equilibrium values. I don't know what they are, but I know that this is 2x, this is x, and I can go and I can plug these into my k expression, and I do know the value of k. So if you look up at the problem, my value of k is 7.6 times 10 to the negative 16, and I'm going to plug in my h2 squared, so that's 2x squared, and then o2 is x, and on the bottom is 1.27 minus 2x, and that whole thing gets squared. So I have a mathematical equation here with one unknown. I can do some algebra to solve for my unknown. This can look like a very intimidating problem here in terms of the algebra, because I've got like an x cubed, an x squared, an x. This would be pretty complicated to solve, but luckily, there is this simplification that we can use when our k value is really small. And if you look at our k value, 10 to the negative 16, this is a very small number. And 
what's important about this is notice how this number is really small and it's proportional to x. So what that means is if that we can assume, I'm going to make a note of our assumption over here, assume, and we go over this in the notes, there's more details about this assumption if you look back at the notes um, on this, B, which I believe are page 15. Uh, but we can assume that if k is small, then x is small, because k and x are proportional. Um, therefore, the change in the concentration or pressure is insignificant. And what does that mean? Well, what that means is 1.27 minus 2x is basically just 1.27. That change in 2x is going to be very significant, insignificant, sorry, in um, relative to my initial value right here. And to clarify what I'm saying there is, let's say we took 1.27 minus some super small number like 0 0.00001. It's going to be 0.12699999, which is basically just 1.27. So this change is so much smaller than this original value, um, we can basically just ignore it. So that makes this math much easier. So if I go back over here, I can simplify this and say 7.6 times 10 to the negative 16 is 2x squared times x divided by 1.27 squared. And that becomes just so much easier now. Um, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 1.27 squared. 1.27 squared. Over here, when you simplify this, don't forget to like distribute the squared here. So it's 2 squared and x squared. So 2 squared is 4. And then x squared is your x squared times x, which is the same thing as this is 4x cubed. So to solve for x, um, you take this number and divide it by 4. I'll just walk through the algebra for those of you who would like that. I'll divide both sides by 4. And then I'm going to take the cube root of the whole thing. And if you are wondering how do I do a cube root on my calculator, um, one tip that I find easier is if I want to take the cube root of some number, x, let's say, um, the way I type it into my calculator is I type it in as x to the power of one-third. Um, or, actually even easier is type it in as x to the 0.33. Then you don't even have to worry about putting that thing in parentheses. So this is actually what I usually do. I take my number and I raise it to the power of 0.33 um, if I want to take a cube root. So... Then you go through and you solve for x and uh, go back in and plug x into these um, this setup right here because what you're trying to find is what's the concentration at equilibrium so the concentration of oxygen actually it's not going to be concentration it's going to be pressure here so the pressure of oxygen at equilibrium is going to be equal to x the pressure of the hydrogen is going to be 2x so make sure you go back in and plug that in. And when you find the pressure of water equilibrium, it's going to be 1.27 minus 2x. And you should find that 2x is much, much smaller than 1.27. This is kind of a way to check your work to see if your assumption we made over here is good or not. Um, if you do this subtraction here and find that x is actually a pretty big number, then maybe you goofed somewhere and you want to go back and check those assumptions that you made. So I'm not going to stop and plug this in my calculator. You can check the answer key um, in OneNote to see if you like plug this in and did your math right. This is just a general overview of this type of question. All right. Thanks for listening.